welcome back everyone thank you uh, for joining in again we started to look at the missionary journey of apostle paul so i have a colorful picture that's what i wanted to show you earlier so let me show that picture once and then we will uh, get back into our study so here it is this is little more colorful so hopefully that is that will be interesting for you to see okay it's too tiny no Uh, are you able to see or it's too small just to make a note of uh, the same cities that i mentioned earlier you know the and the path to it because all that is happening is in the same region the mediterranean region and uh, a little bit of europe so uh, this is all like your jerusalem judea then your syria then you go on to uh, this portion here uh, which is asia minor uh, or what we are calling like the mediterranean region and then you know uh, you will see the journey move on to macedonia okay so we will read about this place called macedonia and then from further out will be europe uh, so i just want you to have a, a picture or an idea of uh, where these things are taking place let me share one more map that brings more clarity to all the areas uh okay Hmm. Okay, this one is a good one. Yeah. Okay. So get a get a uh, like a mental photograph of this. This is what you need for the book of Acts. All the areas that we will cover. Uh, there'll be three missionary journeys that Paul will undertake. Um, you know, moving around these places. So that will. carry on uh, as we read through the book of acts but if we have a picture of this map uh, then we will understand the book of acts so i'm repeating myself jerusalem judea remember jerusalem judea samaria that region here going to syria okay syria uh, tarsus cilicia is right here and i was mentioning about asia minor so this whole entire thing is asia minor where is tarsus in present day times it's turkey okay turkey now uh, this is this would be your asia asia minor asia region and then we will see slowly like after the first missionary journey uh, paul will then go to macedonia for the second missionary journey so where is macedonia from asia he'll move on to the next region here this would be macedonia and in macedonia there will be all these important uh, places philippi thessalonica uh, we will then talk about another region this is the achaia region where you have a very key city known as corinth okay so corinth we'll talk about that place so uh these regions will be covered uh in uh, the different missionary journeys in asia there is this city called ephesus which is uh, very very key in the region of Gal galatia this city called colosse this is important so just have an idea of where these places are uh, we'll talk about the individual journeys later so towards the end of paul's life you know after he does his ministry uh, here he will need to go to italy to rome so remember we said europe parts of uh, um the mediterranean and then europe so he'll cover the europe region uh, and this map will give you a better 
understanding of uh, how we will proceed later. So if you have any questions, you can actually ask. I think maybe our brothers from Africa have uh, a much better idea of where these regions are. Uh, so let me stop sharing the map for now. OK. Uh, all right, so let's get back uh, into Acts 13. Uh, we uh, we now know about this island of Paphos and um, what exactly happens there. And I told us about the spiritual opposition, right? So think about this. Like Even Paul, when he went to preach, Satan was opposing him in various ways. So uh, right now, it's a sorcerer who's engaged in evil practices, who is uh, the source behind the hindrance uh, in the life of this man called Sergius Paulus. He's a proconsul. Who's a proconsul? Proconsul was a, a dignitary, or he was somebody of a, a high position or high rank uh, in Paphos at that time. So he's an intelligent man, and he was open to the gospel. But what was the problem? spiritual hindrance remember in the book of corinthians that's why paul wrote because paul understood all these things he wrote about uh in in uh, i think it's first corinthians 4 4 where he says um, you know the satan or uh, the demonic powers they cause blindness spiritual blindness and uh, that's exactly what uh, they experienced in Paphos. But once uh, this proconsul and his work was dealt with, it was easier to proclaim the gospel. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me just correct myself. I'm always mixing up first and second. Uh, second Corinthians. Yeah, correct. Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, where it says... Uh, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay, so how does blindness come? Spiritual blindness through demonic forces. Uh, and that's what we looked at. So let me just pause. I know I'm saying so many things, but uh, where are you at? Are there any thoughts so far or any comments? Please feel free to share and then I'll continue. Yeah, uh, so uh, I just want to know uh, about the, we saw uh, a brief introduction on Paul and his journey and all the things. So is it available in that revival visitation? Like the complete thing is available over there or is there any other book we can really study so that mm, okay. uh, we can Yeah. So in uh, revivals visitations, there's a brief introduction, Jeffina. There's a brief introduction to the life of Paul. Um, any other book? I think we'll have to form a picture based on all our readings. So you can refer to Enduring Word uh, from David Guzik. He shares uh, some insights about the life of Paul. And then, of course, you know, revivals, visitations, and additional reading uh, that will shed light uh, for you. Uh, you may also study um, the book of Galatians, the book of uh, Corinthians to give that uh, additional clarity about the life of Paul. So we'll have to study. That's when we'll, we'll gain uh, a better picture. Is that okay? Okay, great. Thanks, uh, Jeffina. Yeah, anything else, uh, class? All right, so as uh, Paul moves uh, on his first missionary journey, I think it's time for us also to move on. So let's uh, move forward. We've seen now that in Paphos, the proconsul believed. Moving on to verse 13, uh, let's, let's start there. And it's quite a long passage here. Okay, 
maybe two of us can read. So somebody can read from verse 13 to uh, maybe. Twenty twenty three maybe, and then from twenty four uh, till the end of the passage, another person can read. Uh, verse forty one, another person can read. So thirteen to twenty three, somebody twenty four to forty one, another person. Acts chapter 13, verse 13 to 23. Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Man and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and you fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with an uplifted arm he brought them out of it. Now for a time of about 40 years he put up with their ways in the wilderness and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan he distributed their land to them by allotment. After that he gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet and afterward they asked for a king so God gave them Saul the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up from them for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. And from this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jeffina. Uh, another person can continue from here. Verse twenty, uh, verse twenty-three onwards. From this man said, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior, Jesus. After John had first preached. Before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to lose. Men and brethren, sons of family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to his people, to the people. And we declare you, we declare to you glad tidings, that promise which was made to the fathers. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus. As it is also written in the second Psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despise us. 
marble and perish for i work a work in your days a work which you will by no means believe though one were to declare it to you uh pastor should we continue till the end or? i think let's talk about this first and then we can continue yeah. john yeah thank you thanks okay okay so uh this is the sermon which is delivered by paul and he is speaking to the people uh in antioch of uh, sidia um so we saw paul and in verse 13 it says paul and his party remember i kept saying that the limelight will move to paul so till now who was the key person barnabas barnabas brought paul and barnabas was the one who introduced paul um to the church of antioch now suddenly it is paul and his party and luke is writing also like that he is saying you know uh, that uh, paul is the key person who is leading the team whereas barnabas is in the team but paul seems to have the importance um, they set sail from paphos we saw about paphos and then came to perga in pamphylia we saw that region and now something very key is happening john departing from them returned to jerusalem now this incident though luke doesn't talk much about it it's a uh, um it's an incident that paul did not like okay remember earlier we saw john was with them when he started off when paul and barnabas started the missionary journey uh this john is now going back to jerusalem now we may ask the question uh the journey has just started they only went to um, the island of paphos and preached to the proconsul there how come this man john is returning so quickly hardly anything has been covered in the missionary journey so we can only speculate there are no concrete uh, scriptures to tell us why john went back see he started uh, in the missionary journey but some people say that he was probably homesick uh, he was not very mature and then uh, right after one place he was homesick uh, whereas uh, others say that he was probably not very serious about these missionary journeys um, he had some unfinished tasks back home now we don't know the exact reason why this john went back but why i'm saying this is significant is because this creates a rift between barnabas and paul see the personality of paul uh, we will notice that uh, he he is extremely hard working uh, extremely passionate and um, you know he is a very very focused person uh, and so when he sees somebody like john uh, a younger minister who he's not able to keep focus beyond one uh, you know visit of one uh, city or, or one region uh, he is very upset with this john and he does it, he takes a um, you know like he disliking towards this john but what about barnabas you know there's a, a, a stark contrast between the personality of uh, paul and barnabas barnabas is more of the accommodating kind who probably thinks about why john has done this and uh, what could have been the reason paul is not like that he's a taskmaster and he doesn't like any excuses so when john returned this um later we'll see that it actually causes a rift between paul and barnabas and their personalities so uh that also awakens us to the fact that today when we work with one another you know god doesn't um uh, transform us and make us all uh, of the same Uh, you know personality and uh, style of ministering he allows us to be ourselves and when we are ourselves in group ministry sometimes it's not so easy because uh, we find people making decisions which we would never make uh, but the the thing is we must understand how to work with people we'll see that there will be a rift between barnabas barnabas and paul but later on you know uh, at some point paul will recognize paul will uh, sort of you know uh, his personality will be a little more toned 
toned down and then he'll be willing to accommodate john mark he'll say hey bring john because he'll be useful for the ministry so there are there is a journey of maturity journey of uh, uh change uh, as an individual that uh, paul will also go through uh, barnabas will also go through but this john going back home <laughs> was not a good thing uh, for uh, paul and barnabas and their uh, you know relationship uh, in in some ways okay fine now we are at verse 14 they departed to perga they came to antioch remember i told us don't get confused there are lots of antiochs uh, so this antioch is the antioch of it says pisidia but i saw some place that you know it's it's pronounced as sidia so that's why i was saying sidia uh, so they come to antioch of sidia and uh, they went there to the synagogue on the sabbath day so think about this they knew where to find people people would be at the synagogue on the sabbath day that's where they go and then they start to read uh, and uh, you know they start to speak so uh, finally you know they are speaking paul stood up and he is speaking to the uh, um, men of israel because obviously you will find jews over there and so he's talking to the men of israel and he says you who fear god listen they are all people in the in the synagogue to know about god that's why they are there now he starts narrating remember this uh, this kind of a preaching we have seen this earlier it's nothing new peter used to preach like this he used to go back to the fathers the patriarchs abraham isaac the journey the wilderness moses david why because we are speaking to the jews they need context and so uh, uh, it, it's really important uh, for the minister to understand where the people are coming from even paul recognizes here are jews who are well versed in the scriptures they know about the history of israel so he starts there and he says look you know uh, how we dwelt as strangers in the land of egypt and uh, with an uplifted arm god brought us out uh, and then he also talks about how you know for about a 40 year period of time uh, we were in the wilderness because um, you know because of the various things that happened and uh, then finally you know god brought us into the land of canaan uh, and uh, you know the journey goes on he talks about uh, the judges uh, samuel and then he talks about david who's chosen as king uh, and then you know he continues why david because from david he's going to the seed of david who is that the lord jesus christ so ultimately the sermon is about jesus but all this building up context is to um, proclaim christ so when we are saying that we are preaching we've got to preach um, the truth about the lord jesus uh, it's it's always about the life of jesus it's always about the deity of jesus that we must come back to and that again is the uh, motivation that paul has so he's bringing the conversation or he's bringing the the um, focus to the lord jesus so from david he comes to david son of jesse he talks a little bit and then he moves on he says the man seed according to the promise god raised up for israel a savior that's the center of the sermon a savior jesus then uh he he talks about uh, you know who this jesus is he says uh, how john the baptist said that you know he is only there uh, 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 uh preaching baptism uh, the baptism of repentance but even a man like john the baptist who was honored among the people said that he was not worthy to uh uh lose the sandals of jesus so again the focus is back to jesus uh, jesus the seed of david jesus greater than john the baptist okay so then he is continuing you know he's uh, going on talking and he says uh, um Uh, family of abraham and those among you who fear god to you the word of this salvation has been sent so you see key themes in what he is talking he's saying Jesus is deity Jesus is honored among men uh Jesus is the one who brought salvation 
okay and he points out and he says that uh, don't you know that uh, like everyone was actually talking about jesus uh, and uh, you know he uh, talks about how the lord jesus he was uh, raised by god from the dead and um, he finally you know he just moves on to uh, the fact where he says that uh, god did not allow him to see any form of corruption uh, and so jesus was resurrected from the dead so he mentions salvation but again verse 38 he says uh forgiveness of sins okay so this is what jesus brought for us salvation forgiveness of sins and he tells them now after preaching about jesus he tells them what they need to do verse 39 he says and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could be justified by the law of moses so jesus is being proclaimed and then uh, what jesus did for us is being proclaimed what happened because of that salvation forgiveness is being proclaimed and then uh, uh, paul is actually communicating to these jews and saying that uh, if you believe because everyone who believes is justified so we can now be justified okay uh, and uh, he is giving them the option of receiving salvation uh, being forgiven being justified so this is a uh, really a preaching session which is going on in antioch of sidia in one of the synagogues where the jews are so now we can continue another person could kindly read the remaining uh, portion here in acts chapter 13 verse 42 a uh, two verse 52 so um, roughly about 10 verses uh, but we would require one more individual to read please starting from verse 42 yeah so when the jews went out of the synagogue the gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next sabbath Now when the congregation had broken up men of the Jews and the devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God on the next sabbath <coughs> excuse me almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God but when the Jews saw the mag- the multitude they feel they were filled with envy and contradicting and bless and blaspheming they opposed the things spoken by paul then paul and barnabas grew bold and said it was necessary that the word of god should be spoken to you first but since you reject it and judge yourself unworthy unworthy of everlasting life behold we turn to the gentiles to the gentiles for so the lord has commanded us i have sent you as the light to the gentiles they should be that you should be for salvation to the end of the earth now when the gentiles had heard this they were glad and glorified the word of god as they and as they had been appointed to eternal life believed and the word of god was being spread throughout the region but the jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city raised up prostitution against paul and barnabas and expelled them from their region but these shook off but they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy spirit amen thank you lubega thank you for uh, reading through that passage uh okay yes uh, jafina you have a question okay uh, maybe not so i'll go ahead and explain uh, we saw that paul preached to the jews and now uh, what's happening is there are gentiles who 
are also remember we mentioned that uh, proselytes so you have people from other communities who were devout followers of the god of israel they are known as proselytes so there are gentiles who begged for these words to be taught to them the next sabbath uh, and uh, so the next sabbath it happened uh, we find that uh, paul goes up and there was a huge gathering so uh, luke describes it as the whole city came together to hear the word of god but you see this whole city coming together uh, proved uh, like a threat to the jews because they were all about politics they were all about uh, you know power power games and power tactics so when they saw that there was such a uh, huge following for paul uh, they felt threatened that what if these guys uh, you know uh, gain power in that place maybe they've come to uh, elevate themselves and uh, become the authorities uh, of that place so you know these kind of uh, thoughts cause them to be envious about paul and barnabas and so what did they do they started uh, contradicting they started blaspheming uh, paul and they opposed the things that were spoken by paul so just some time ago there was an openness right and they were willing to listen but now there is an opposition uh, and because of that you know paul uh, 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 speaks to them and he says that uh, we are now at uh, verse uh 46 then paul, paul and barnabas grew bold okay so what is the result of uh, uh, experiencing persecution or opposition boldness uh, that's what you see throughout the book of acts they, they were never scared uh, or you know they they did not uh, back down because of the rising opposition but with god's wisdom uh, boldly they continue to proclaim so they were bold and they said it was necessary that the word of god should be spoken to you first who is you first jews but since you reject it since the jews are rejecting it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life behold we turn to the gentiles so they they are now in a uh, way forced to take the gospel to the gentiles because the jews are not accepting of the gospel so uh, based on the uh, based on remember we we had mentioned earlier the prophetic word which even ananias had received so paul states here in verse 47 i have set you as a light to the gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth so based on the word uh, regarding the life of paul he is now moving in that direction so acts 13 when we started according to the word of god for the things that i have called set aside paul and barnabas for the things that i have called them to do so in line with the purpose of god paul is now journeying he went he tried preaching to the jews they are not listening but according to the word on his life that he has to be a light to the gentiles now what is he doing he is actually moving on to preaching to the gentiles so in verse 48 it says now the gentiles heard this uh, they were glad and glorified the word of the lord as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed so there was a move among the gentiles and the gentiles started to believe god so uh, there was opposition but the word of god did not uh, um, you know stop impacting lives we see a different community which is the gentiles being uh, receptive in antioch of sidia and then what happens over there there is obviously opposition was rising and opposition got pretty bad uh, uh, wo- uh, the jews stirred up devout and prominent women so it's like uh, an uprising that is starting against paul and barnabas intentional one so what do the jews do they go to the who's who of the city and uh, they instigate them against paul and barnabas and because of this uh, it's so unfortunate that you know they paul and barnabas went there to do the ministry um, uh, but uh, you know they are now being expelled 
when they went to do a good thing they expelled so what what uh, paul and barnum is doing remember uh, when one was not welcome into the city earlier jesus also said just shake off the dust from your feet what a shake off the dust from your feet it's a it's a uh, it's uh, an expression right it, it's a uh, uh, it's a manner of speech so it doesn't literally mean that they shook the dust off their feet but uh, in uh, hermeneutics we understand that we have to interpret this basically they they said okay fine if you don't want us preaching here fine we'll just move on uh, and uh, the rejection which came to paul and barnabas as people of god they they just based on that uh, let go of uh, this community and said fine we won't minister to you anymore and uh, so they shook the dust off their feet against them and uh, they came to the next uh, city uh, which is iconium and we will read more about what happened in iconium uh, later on uh, but look at this persecution is always going on but what do we read in the midst of persecution generally we read uh, the ministers were bold and then it also says the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy spirit so uh, wow all this is existing together so it, it's not like a perfect world right like there's no opposition the surroundings are uh, so conducive for um, paul and barnabas to preach the gospel and so you know things are moving forward smoothly no things are not moving smoothly and yet the gospel is spreading people are filled with joy and uh, the holy spirit is doing his work so uh, i'll stop uh, here jafina you have some question please go ahead you can ask yes pastor i think i didn't turn on the mic last time <laughs> yeah so in verse 31 uh we see uh, he was seen for many days by those who came up with him from galilee to jerusalem who are his witnesses to the people so i just want to know whether it's talking about the disciples uh, or uh, who it's actually talking about in verse 31 okay verse 31 of uh, uh, yeah correct he was seen for many days by those who came up uh, with him from galilee to jerusalem who are his witnesses to the people so this one jafina it's talking about the resurrected christ yeah yeah uh, so what what is your question i mean <laughs> I understand it's talking about the resurrected Christ. Yeah. But uh, uh so who are these witnesses is it only his disciples or Okay, okay, got it. Uh Yeah. I will tell you there is a verse actually. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15:6 where uh, that verse it says um I'll just read the niv version which i readily got here it says after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep so 500 brothers and sisters it says uh which is likely see brothers and sisters is like a term used for believers uh which was used so those who believed in jesus i think he just showed up to them it says 500 people in first corinthians 15 6 those are the people okay uh, is there any idea on how many days pastor after resurrection he showed up to how many days okay how see after this many days uh, ha 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 okay right so just one second see uh, the death of jesus happened at the time of uh, we are aware about the um Pract- uh, the celebration or or the observance of the passover okay now passover to pentecost passover to pentecost is 50 days 
um so we know that jesus was with them and then after he ascended it was roughly about 10 days uh, before the baptism in the holy spirit so calculating like that passover to pentecost uh, and then jesus ascended there was 10 days duration before the uh, uh, acts chapter 2 incident happened so 40 days is the calculation jefina 40 days jesus was uh, uh, walking around in his resurrected body Okay, Pastor. Uh, I have two more questions. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So it says, uh, I don't know which verse. It says, uh, "You will not allow your holy one to see corruption." There is a verse in that. Okay? Yeah. So it talks about the physical body being corrupted. Yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So in verse forty-two, we see. Uh, so Paul preached to the Jews. Uh huh. And then the Gentiles are actually begging. So I believe maybe they heard him speaking. So yeah. why they asked him to preach when, when like uh, words might be preached to them the next Sabbath, like why the Sabbath is actually mentioned is it a holiday for them? <laughs> Okay, yeah. so yeah, that uh, question actually I don't re- have a definite answer to it, but as you're stating, maybe Sabbath to Sabbath is when they had uh, large gatherings. I feel so one Sabbath, um, Paul ministered to the Jews, and maybe the obviously the Gentiles would have a different congregation. They cannot be part of the Jewish. Um, Uh, group right so they are inviting paul to a separate uh, session and they may have thought that they need a large gathering uh, and they need enough time so they could have picked the next sabbath i i don't exactly know actually yes yes that's it sure thank you thank you any any other questions or thoughts All right, so I think uh, it's pretty good. So far, we've seen how the ministry has happened in Antioch of Syria, and uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas now move on to Iconium. Uh, so we will look at uh, Iconium. Uh, remember, the first missionary journey is still on; it's not over yet. Okay, till they make a full circle and then they come back to Antioch. That's when we'll say that the journey is over journey has just started and uh, uh unfortunately even in the very first place uh you know there not not really the first place paphos is where they ministered and then now in iconium but there is opposition earlier through that um uh, sorcerer bar jesus and now uh through the uh, jewish um, jewish um, notable people Uh, Jewish people of the city of Iconium, they are having opposition. But praise God, you know they are bold. They continue to minister. They are thoroughly equipped, right, with the power of God, with the word of God. So nothing is really stopping them, and uh, you know they are carrying on as per the call of God on their lives. So uh, let's uh, maybe stop here, and we will pick up. from acts chapter 14 uh, for the rest of uh, paul's missionary first missionary journey in our next class uh, so at this point we can uh, close with a word of prayer i would like to request someone to please go ahead and lead us in prayer let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the classes that we had today. We thank you for your powerful truths. The way you transform a person is beyond imagination, Jesus. But we thank you for the call that you have placed uh, in our life. As we are reading about uh, Acts and the life of Paul, Jesus, God, I just pray that uh, it will stir up our desire. Uh, it will stir up our uh, passion to work more for your kingdom, to move more supernaturally, uh, and to not to just 
listen to their classes, but to actually put it into practice in our life so that we can win souls for you, Jesus. Fill us with that boldness and the confidence that the early church had uh, so that we can move mightily for your kingdom. I give all the classmates and Pastor Nancy into your hands. Bless them all in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day and a very blessed weekend. Bye for now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.